This improved version of the 5th generation Audi A4 Avant now features a sharper look and still claims to be class leadingly high tech and, yes, practical. It's also more efficient thanks to the adoption of Audi's latest mild hybrid engine tech. Out back, there's a 510 litre boot that's bigger than you might expect from a car in the mid-sized executive market segment. And of course, there's the usual cool, classy Audi ambience. You'd like one. It's hard to be successful in the mid-sized executive market sector without a credible estate body style. Just ask Jaguar or Lexus. That is, after all, what an increasing number of buyers in this segment want. Audi reckons to have nailed exactly what they need with this car, this improved version of the fifth generation A4 Avant. This B9 series A4 Avant was first launched in 2015, then substantially updated four years on to create the revised model that we're going to look at here. Buyers have been able to choose the A4 in both saloon and Avant estate guises ever since this model line was first launched back in 1994, and this improved model has been made sleeker and cleverer than ever before which is important given this car's need to face down direct competitors who've absolutely transformed themselves over the last few years, namely the Mercedes C-Class Estate and the BMW 3 Series Touring. Quite a lot's new here. Uh, the styling updates might look quite superficial, but actually only the roof, uh, the bonnet and the tailgate remain the same as before. Of more significance is the fact that Audi has introduced RDE1 compliant powertrains and its MHEV mild hybrid engine technology across the range with a 12 volt system for mainstream models and a 48 volt setup for the new S4 TDI diesel variant which is what we're trying here. Plus on all versions the cabin gains a new larger MMI infotainment screen to work in concert with the now standard virtual cockpit digital instrument cluster. There's also now more equipment, a revised range structure, and some of Audi's choicest camera-driven safety and autonomous driving technology. Will it all be enough to keep this car current against ever-improving competitors? Time to find out. In terms of what's been changed here, the key thing is Audi's adoption of mild hybrid engine technology almost right across the board, with a 12 volt MHEV setup provided for virtually all of the brand's four cylinder engines. Otherwise, the engineering of this Mark V A4 Avant is much as it was when we first saw it back in 2015, which means it's still primarily a front or four wheel drive car in a segment dominated by rear driven rivals. This hasn't held this Audi back too much in the past, and we don't expect that to be much of an issue with this facelifted fifth generation B9 series model either. Potential buyers of this car tend to prioritize comfort and refinement rather than on the limit handling, and the A4 Avant continues to deliver impressively in both of these areas. The only real caveat here lies with the firmer sport suspension that you have to have with the S-Line trim level that most customers choose. Try before you buy is our advice. We mentioned the mild hybrid engine tech. The only power plant that doesn't get it is the older tech 2 litre diesel unit fitted to the 190 PS 40 TDI Quattro derivative. Otherwise the MHEV system features on all the four cylinder power plants incorporating an integrated BAS belt alternator starter generator that powers a 12 volt main electrical setup in which a compact lithium ion battery in the boot stores energy harvested via a Kurs kinetic energy recovery system. Audi expects a strong seller to be the entry-level A4 35 TFSI petrol variant, which now gets a 150 PS 2 litre TFSI unit and is the only one in the range that can be had with a manual gearbox. The same 2 litre TFSI engine is offered in 190 PS form in the 40 TFSI and in 245 PS guys in the 45 TFSI Quattro. 
Diesel buyers are offered the Volkswagen Group's newest 2.0-litre TDI unit in 136 PS form in the base 30 TDI derivative, or in 163 PS guise in the mid-range 35 TDI model many A4 Avant customers will want. Diesel also now powers the sporting S4 model we're trying here, which now uses a 347 PS 3.0-litre twin-turbo six-cylinder unit, which has the more advanced 48-volt MHEV system and is boosted by an electric compressor. The only B9 generation A4 Avant model that's quicker than that is the ballistically fast RS4 Avant, which uses a 2.9 litre twin turbo V6 petrol motor, putting out 450 PS. This gets to 62 miles an hour in 4.1 seconds and can hit 174 miles an hour on a race circuit, but is just as happy collecting your dry cleaning. We should also mention a more lifestyle orientated A4 Avant model, the A4 Allroad. This variant features a 34mm ride height increase and a package of off-road tweaks. Engine-wise, A4 Allroad buyers get the 40 TDI and 45 TFSI diesel and petrol power plants we've already mentioned, plus the 286 PS 3.0-litre TDI 6-cylinder 50 TDI engine from the A6. It's always difficult to update someone else's work, but Audi head of design Mark Lichter has addressed the task purposefully with this B9 series fifth generation A4 Avant, leaving only the roof, the bonnet, and the boot lid of Wolfgang Egger's original shape untouched. The previous 2015 to 2019 era version of this car was classy, but there was nothing particularly memorable about it. Now there's a bit more pavement presence. Mainly because of this updated front end, which has gained the slim slit at the leading edge of the bonnet that characterises current Audi design, said to be reminiscent of the iconic 80s Audi Quattro Coupe model. It sits above a broader, flatter single frame grille, which comes in S-specific form with this S4 model and features a twilight grey matte finish and dual aluminium struts. This feature is flanked by headlights that are now of the full LED variety, regardless of the trim level chosen. There's also a re-sculpted bumper with more horizontal elements, these intended to emphasize width. More unusually for a facelifted car, the side panels have been completely re-sculpted too. Gone is the previous single sharp upper tornado line that used to run uninterrupted from front to back. Instead, there's a shorter central mid-level crease that runs through the door handles and fresh detailing above both front and rear wings that's supposed to create a wheel arch look also reminiscent of that 80s Quattro Coupe model. There's a restyled palette of alloy wheel designs, of course. As before, they vary between 17 and 19 inches in size. With this S4 variant, we've got 19 inch five spoke V style rims with contrasting gray finishing here. As before, careful touches make a difference, like the way that the exterior mirrors are mounted on the front doors as they would be on a sports car. Plus, as usual with an Audi, the body below the window line is about twice as high as the glazed area from the window line to the roof. And the roof height remains the lowest in the premium segment. This A4 Avant Estate model measures in at the same length as the alternative saloon, just under 4.8 metres, but is 29 millimetres taller. At the rear, all models gain smarter bumper styling, uh, chrome or grey finishing for the leading edge of the boot lid and uh, LED tail lamps with a chrome central strip featuring a multifaceted 3D design illuminated by no fewer than 48 LEDs that create a distinctive nighttime signature. This S4 variant gets an S rear diffuser in twilight grey matte, an S rear spoiler and S specific dual branch tailpipes with twin oval pipes on the left and the right. Under the skin of all A4 Avants, there's still the same stiff, sophisticated MLB Evo platform that all modern Volkswagen Group models of this size are built upon.
As ever though, with an Audi, it's the interior that'll really sell you this car. Let's check it out. The door clunks shut with vault-like quality, leaving you in a very nice cabin indeed. Despite recent advances made by direct rivals, in many ways, this remains the defining interior of its class, with cabin quality that's still unbettered in this segment, and the cool, classy feel that's distinctive to this Engelstadt brand. The key change here is the addition of this now much larger 10.1 inch centre dash infotainment screen with its more sophisticated graphics, um, acoustic touch functionality and natural language voice control. Unfortunately, you don't now get the useful rotary controller that operated the previous MMI system, but navigation is now standard, as are a wider range of cutting-edge Audi Connect media features. Plus, unlike direct rivals, Audi won't make you pay more for Apple CarPlay, Android Auto smartphone mirroring. You're positioned almost faultlessly on supportive heated seats in front of the best digital dash in the segment, the 12.3 inch Audi virtual cockpit screen, now fitted as standard throughout the range. You're perfectly positioned to view all of this information uh, by supportive chairs that are anatomically shaped and feature embellishments that you'd have to pay extra for on rivals, things like heating and lumbar support. Plus, if you avoid entry-level trim, they come with standard leather upholstery too. The quilted sports seats in this S4 variant are particularly opulent, which certainly uh, adds to the very upmarket ambience served up here. Whatever you look, touch or feel, there are treats. Buttons click nicely, column stalks feel good, and the low rent plastics that you'd find further down in most premium rivals are noticeable by their absence. Time to take a seat in the rear, accessed via these wide opening doors with low sills. Your perspective on what's served up here will depend on your expectations. Space-wise, it's no worse and no better than you'd find in the back of a rival BMW 3 Series Touring or Mercedes C-Class Estate. In comparison to previous generation A4 events, Audi improved the rear passenger compartment of the original version of this fifth generation model by lengthening the wheelbase by 12 millimeters, freeing up 23 millimeters more legroom. But that's still only just enough for a tall adult to sit behind an equally lofty driver. And it wouldn't be were it not for these scalloped front seat backs. A uh, volume branded D-segment estate model like a Volkswagen Passat, a Skoda Superb or a Ford Mondeo would give you considerably more space than this. And more headroom. Partly this is because of the low roof line, though that's less of a limiting factor than we thought it might be. More of an issue is this centre transmission tunnel, which is strangely prominent for what is, after all, primarily a front wheel drive model. Still, three adults are very rarely carried at the back of this kind of car, and two will be as comfortable as it's possible to be in a mid-sized premium executive contender of this kind. As for storage solutions, well, the door bins will uh, each fit a one litre bottle of drink, but it's pretty mean of Audi to make you pay extra for things like seat back pockets and the cup holder attachments in this pull-down central armrest, which incorporates a shallow storage tray. Still, the standardization of three-zone climate control across the range does at least mean that backseat folk have their own climate controls accessed via this small screen below the twin central vents. Nearby, there's also a 12-volt socket. Uh, you get overhead reading lights, and the A4 sets a record in our experience when it comes to the provision of rear compartment coat hooks. For some reason, there are no fewer than four. Time to take a look out back. Avant estate models get a standard electrically operated tailgate, and across the range, there's an optional advanced key package which allows you to open either the boot lid or the hatch by waving your foot below the bumper, should you be approaching your A4 laden down with bags. This Avant's hatch raises to reveal a 505 litre boot. The equivalent saloon version would give you 480 litres. 
Both figures are way off what you'd get in a volume branded D segment model like estate versions of Volkswagen's Passat or Skoda Superb, but look fine in terms of this Audi's more natural rivals. This Avant's capacity is a fraction more than you'd get in a rival BMW 3 Series Touring and significantly more than is offered by a Mercedes C-Class Estate, which typically offers 490 litres. On a top variant, or with the optional storage and luggage compartment pack fitted, you get these netted compartments on both sides of the boot and a luggage net that can be stretched out between the four smart silver tie-down points to keep small items from rolling about. Plus, on this Avant model, it gives you tensioning straps on both cargo sidewalls. The main area beneath the floor of the cargo area can't be raised, uh, thank the mild hybrid electrical system for that, but you can raise this rear part, though only to access a very shallow area that holds a few spare parts. Uh, nice touches include LED cargo sidewall light strips, an LED light on the inside of the tailgate for when you're loading at night, and this neat lower switch for the optional retractable tow bar. If you need more space in an A4 Avant, there's the versatility of a standard fit folding rear backrest that's flexibly spit 40-20-40, which means you can push forward the centre part for the carriage of long items like skis without disturbing a couple of rear seated occupants. Uh, flattening the seat completely reveals up to 1,510 litres of space. There's a premium of £1,400 to find if you want this Avant body shape rather than the alternative four-door saloon. From the launch of the facelifted version of this fifth generation B9 series A4 Avant, that meant pricing which kicked off from around £31,000, with most subsequent variants ranged in price up to around £45,000, though if you want this S4 variant, your spend is likely to be closer to the £50,000 mark, and even more if you want a higher spec. There's also a frantically fast RS4 Avant model with 450 PS, priced close to £70,000, though that's not our focus here. Every A4 Avant model comes with 7-speed S-Tronic Auto Transmission as standard, apart from the base 35 TFSI petrol version, where it's a £1,550 option. Let's drill down into the detail a little. As we'll see in a moment, there are five trim levels. Technic, Sport, S-Line, uh, this Black Edition and Top Vorsprung plus the Sporting S4 beyond that, that's the variant we've got here, which comes in standard, this Black Edition form or in top Vorsprung guys. A4 customers choosing in the volume part of the range who don't want that 35 TFSI petrol powered 150 PS model that we just mentioned will respectively need either £2,750 more to graduate to the base 136 PS diesel, that's the 30 TDI, or just over £4,500 more to get the mid-range 163 PS diesel, that's the 35 TDI, the latter car requiring a starting budget of around £35,000. The power plants just mentioned, all of them now enhanced with Audi's 12 volt MHEV mild hybrid technology, are the only ones you'll be able to choose from if you limit yourself to base Technic trim. If you can trade up to the two mid-range spec options that most customers choose, Sport or S-Line trim, you'll be offered two additional more powerful 190 PS engine options. The first is the 40 TFSI petrol model, which like the three powertrains just covered, only comes in front driven form. The other 190 PS A4 variant is the 40 TDI diesel, which only comes with quattro four wheel drive. This partly explaining why asking prices for this version start up at nearly 40,000 pounds. The 40 TDI power plant, by the way, is the only unit in the range not available with mild hybrid technology, apparently because it's from an older engine generation. Plusher A4 trim levels also offer the option of a faster petrol unit, the highly tuned 2 litre power plant that features in the 245 PS 45 TFSI Quattro derivative, which might be a good choice for any potential buyers who don't like this top S4 model switch from petrol to 347 PS diesel power.
The SUV inspired A4 Allroad also continues, which is the model you'd choose if you needed some kind of light off-road ability in a car of this kind, but didn't want to move out of an A4 into Audi's Q3 or Q5 SUVs. The A4 Allroad offers slightly raised ride height and some extra off-road tools. It's only available in a Vanta state form, and as you'd expect, can only be had with quattro four-wheel drive. Buyers of this variant pay a premium of just over £1,000 over the cost of an equivalently trimmed and engined normal range A4 Avant Quattro and can choose either of three power plants, either the 45 TFSI petrol engine, the 40 TDI diesel or a unit that can only be had in an A4 all-road, the 286 PS six-cylinder 50 TDI diesel. On to rivals, and a couple in particular, the BMW 3 Series Touring and the Mercedes C-Class Estate, the two competitors that tend to be top of most prospective A4 Avant customers' alternative wish lists. Now, most of the magazines you'll read will tell you that these three cars cost much the same. At the bottom of the petrol range, that's true. An A4 35 TFSI priced in the 32 to 33,000 pound bracket costs about the same as a comparably specified version of the Mercedes C180 estate and about the same as a BMW 320i Touring too. Though it's worth mentioning that the BMW gives you around 35 PS more power for that outlay. So a useful dose of extra performance without any efficiency downside. Diesel comparisons between these three cars are a little more difficult. Take the A4 Avant 40 TDI with 190 PS, for instance, priced up at around, well, just over 39,000 pounds. Now, at first glance, it seems to be priced positioned a couple of thousand pounds above its two comparably powered direct rivals, the BMW 320D Touring and the Mercedes C220D Estate. But that's because this Audi has Quattro four-wheel drive as standard you're more likely, of course, to be considering a lower-powered front-driven diesel A4 Avant, probably the A4 35 TDI with 163 PS, which costs around £35,000, doesn't have a direct C-Class estate equivalent, but which costs around £1,000 more than a comparable BMW 318D Touring Auto. Enough. Let's say you've looked at the various alternatives and you've decided that an A4 Avant is indeed what you want. Should that be the case, your decision might finally be swayed Ingolstadt's way if you were to be convinced that this Audi held a slight advantage in terms of the standard kit being offered for the money. And that might well now be the case, for with this facelifted model, quite a lot extra has been added into entry-level variants, things that you'd have had to pay more for before, like the 12.3-inch virtual cockpit digital instrument binnacle screen, uh, heated front seats, a navigation system, a rear-view camera, power folding, auto-dimming heated mirrors, and full LED headlights. That's in addition to the roster of features that were fitted before, which we'll run through for you now. Even with base Technic trim, you're pretty generously treated, as you'd have a right to expect for the kind of prices now being asked. We've just mentioned a few standard items that you might not have expected to find fitted as standard at this end of the range. Uh, to those, add 17-inch 10-spoke crystal alloy wheels, an acoustic windscreen, auto headlamps and wipers, uh, front and rear parking sensors, LED rear tail lamps, front seat lumbar support, uh, cruise control with a speed limiter, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and an alarm. There's also the Audi Drive Select driving mode system, and all Avant models feature a power-operated tailgate. Perhaps the most important piece of standard interior equipment fitted across the A4 Avant range, though, is this car's high-end infotainment package. Audi calls it MMI Navigation Plus with MMI Touch. To operate it all, the improved version of this fifth generation A4 borrows from the new generation MIB3 infotainment platform that we first saw in the fourth generation A8 saloon. All borrows from part of it anyway. Specifically, the high mounted center dash 10.1 inch screen with its more sophisticated graphics, uh, acoustic feedback and natural language voice control. 
This setup's intelligent 3D navigation system is able to take into account traffic congestion and previously driven routes, brief you on filling stations and parking places on your route, and include 3D graphic models of many European cities. The MMI package also includes voice recognition, which is able to connect with the cloud-based Amazon voice service Alexa. And there's an eight speaker DAB sound system and the usual smartphone interface, which hooks you up with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto phone mirroring connectivity systems that are included here, but would cost extra and or be subject to a subscription with most rivals. All of this comes as standard with base Technic trim, but most A4 Avant customers opt to find the extra to move on to one of the mid-range trim levels. Possibly the next one up, Sport Spec, which adds in larger 18-inch 10-spoke V wheels and sportier-looking exterior finishing, plus front sport seats, uh, twin leather upholstery, and an LED interior lighting pack. The most popular A4 Avant trim level, though, continues to be S-Line. That's primarily because it delivers a significantly more purposeful look. That comes courtesy of larger 19-inch 5-arm Torsio alloy wheels, uh, rear privacy glass, and an S-Line sports styling pack that on Avant models includes an S-Line rear roof spoiler too. At this level in the range, you also get all-weather headlamps with dynamic beam adjustment, dynamic scrolling rear indicators, and sports suspension lowered by 23 millimeters. The cabin of an S-Line Spec A4, meanwhile, is lifted by smarter leather and Alcantara upholstery. If you want to go further, the Black Edition Spec we've got here gets you a meaner look, courtesy of titanium black exterior finishing, plus inside there's a flat bottom three-spoke version of the sports steering wheel. Top Vorsprung trim, uh, well, with that, you'll find that virtually every significant option box will have been ticked for you, including features that you can't specify as options elsewhere in the range. Uh, things like adaptive damping, uh, more sophisticated Audi Matrix LED headlights, a head-up display, and an extended leather pack which coats the top of the dash with stitched hide. At this level in the range, you get a lot of additional camera safety kit, and inevitably, the Vorsprung embellishment includes a lot of luxury niceties. 19-inch, uh, 5-bespoke star wheels, a softer, fine napper leather upholstery, a Bang & Olufsen 3D sound system, grey oak inlays and heat for the front and outer rear seats, along with power adjustment with memory settings and a massaging function for the front chairs. Plus, there's a multicolored extended LED interior lighting pack, uh, Audi beam puddle lights, the advanced key keyless entry system, and the Audi phone box package with a wireless charging mat. Vorsprung spec Avants also get a panoramic glass roof. So, if you're still with us, we've covered what you get with all the mainstream A4 Avant trim levels. Technic, Sport, S-Line, Black Edition and Vorsprung. That leaves only the minority interest specialist standalone models in the range we mentioned earlier, this S4, the RS4, and the A4 Allroad. As you'd expect, this S4 version of this car has its own specific spec, with, amongst other things, special S Sport suspension, an enhanced braking system, a specific body kit with special door mirror housings, uh, Nappa leather trimmed super sport seats, and S instrument dials. S4 buyers wanting to go further can embellish things with either Black Edition's trim, which is what we have here, or Vorsprung spec. It's that top Vorsprung spec that most closely mirrors the kind of equipment that you get in the top RS4 Avant Super Estate variant, though as we said earlier, that's not our focus here. Finally, the all-road version of this model, which only comes in Avant Estate form with Quattro four-wheel drive, also has, to some degree, its own spec primarily a revised version of the Comfort Dynamic suspension setup with a 34 mm ride height increase, an off-road detection system, a special extended wheel arches and underbody protection, along with various small exterior and interior trimming differences, plus an extra off-road drive select driving mode. A4 all-road buyers can choose between sport or Vorsprung levels of trim. 
Let's move on to look at safety. Even the most basically specified A4 Avant will come properly provided for in this respect with, as you'd expect, an autonomous braking system. Audi calls its setup Presense City. This is one of those setups that constantly scans the road ahead in search of potential collision hazards. In this case, it works at up to 52 miles an hour. If it detects something that might cause a collision, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, the system will automatically brake the car and should be able to avoid an impact at speeds of under 19 miles an hour. If you're going faster than that, the Presense City system will reduce your speed to soften the impending impact. If you do hit something and panic, a standard multi-collision brake assist system will automatically take over braking duties to avoid the possibility of skiddying and further collisions. As for more common standard safety features, well, all versions of this car also get the Audi Connect Safety and Service Package, which will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location should the airbags go off. You can also tick off Isofix child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints, and a tire pressure loss indicator, plus twin front, side, and curtain airbags. In addition, as expected in this segment, there's a complete roster of electronic acronyms, including the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction, and stability control. There's also a rest recommendation feature that monitors your driving for drowsiness, alerting you if necessary to stop for a restorative coffee. On uphill junctions, you'll be glad of a hill hold assist feature that stops you from drifting backwards. It's always possible to go further though, and should you want extra peace of mind, your Audi Center salesperson will doubtless point you towards the awkwardly named Driver Assistance Pack Tour package that we mentioned earlier. Now, you won't be able to have this with the two most affordable Technic and Sport trim levels, and you won't need it with top Vorsprung trim because this optional pack is standard there, but otherwise, this package of items will be available to you on your chosen A4 Avant for an extra payment of £1,250. So, what do you get? Well, with the Driver Assistance Pack Tour, your A4 Avant will be embellished with a Level 2 style autonomous driving feature, adaptive cruise control with stop and go and traffic jam assist, and a clever efficiency tool that works with it, a predictive efficiency assistant. Plus, there are five camera driven safety features. We'll start with adaptive cruise control with stop and go and traffic jam assist. This system's there to automatically keep your A4 a set distance behind the car in front on the highway, warning you if you're too close to another vehicle and able to automatically stop you, then start you off again if you come across a tailback. The traffic jam assist bit also frees you up in slow to medium speed cues, allowing the car to automatically brake, accelerate and steer for you at speeds of up to 37 miles an hour. The predictive efficiency assistance system works with this setup, regulating your Audi speed for maximum efficiency and also offering driving tips that could create fuel savings of up to 10%. We mentioned that this optional tour pack also had five camera safety features there to make the difference between a near miss and a very bad day. Let's run through them for you. We'll start with a system the Ingolstadt brand calls Presense Front. Remember that standard Presense City setup we were just talking to you about that at low speed scans the road ahead for collisions and can automatically brake to avoid them? Well, wouldn't it be good if that setup operated at higher speeds too? With Presense Front, it does. There's also Turn Assist, which automatically applies the brakes to prevent an accident if you're turning out of a junction and haven't seen an oncoming car or bike. If only every car had that feature. Other more familiar inclusions in the pack run to traffic sign recognition that can picture road signs and display them on the dash, uh, active lane assist there to gently steer you back into your lane if you inadvertently drift out of it, and a so-called collision avoidance assistant that tweaks the steering to keep the car stable in emergency maneuvers. It's all very reassuring.
All the hybrid headlines surrounding this revised post-2019 era A4 Avant model might lead you to expect greater efficiency gains than are actually delivered. Audi's claim for the difference its 12-volt MHEV or mild hybrid system makes is actually quite modest, a saving of 0.3 litres of fuel for every 100 kilometres or 62 miles. Worthwhile certainly, but you can keep the Prius comparisons on hold. A bigger efficiency change actually took place when this Mark V A4 design first saw the light of day back in 2015. Thanks to a stiffer, lighter, new generation MLB Evo chassis, this B9 series model managed to weigh in up to 120 kilograms lighter than its direct predecessor, a reduction equivalent to the weight saving you'd make if you asked a couple of your adult passengers to get out a walk. Mind you, all that did was to return this Audi to somewhere near the class standard. Even now, it's still 50 kilograms heavier than an equivalent Mercedes C-Class estate. You could say the same about the MHEV engine tweaks. Just in case you haven't seen our driving experience section, we'll brief you on what Audi's definition of mild hybrid tech actually means. A BAS belt alternator starter generator that with the four-cylinder engines powers a 12-volt main electrical setup in which a compact lithium-ion battery in the boot stores energy harvested via a Kerr's kinetic energy recovery system. During braking, the BAS package can recover up to five kilowatts of power and feed it back into the battery. If the driver takes their foot off the accelerator at speeds of between 34 and 99 miles an hour, the mild hybrid system will recuperate energy while the car rolls in idle or coasts with its engine automatically switched off. The belt alternator starter generator restarts the engine the next time the accelerator is depressed and does so faster and more gently than a conventional starter. All of this you'll particularly notice at urban speeds where the engine start-stop system is cutting in and out. The start-stop range begins at just under 14 miles an hour, so you'll often find the car coasting up to the end of a traffic queue, a traffic light, or a level crossing. All of which sounds good, but in fuel consumption terms, still leaves the mainstream versions of this car no better off than rival BMW and Mercedes models that don't yet feature mild hybrid tech, so something's not quite right somewhere. Business users will often be more interested in emissions though, and here this A4 Avant does rather better, in diesel form anyway. Let's get to the WLTP figures. The Volume 30 TDI 136 PS diesel variant and the 35 TDI version with 163 PS both return identical figures, up to 54.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and up to 137 grams per kilometer of CO2. Both those stats are very similar to what you get from rival BMW 320D Touring Auto and Mercedes C 220D estate models. The 40 TDI Quattro A4 Avant variant has more power, 190 PS, the weight of a four-wheel drive system and an absence of mild hybrid tech because it's an older tech engine. So it's not surprising that here the figures drop uh, quite significantly uh, to best returns of 47.9 miles to the gallon and 156 grams per kilometer. What about petrol power? Does the MHEV system benefit you any more here? Not really. The base 35 TFSI Avant variant with manual or auto transmission manages a WLTP rated combined cycle fuel return of up to 41.5 miles to the gallon and a WLTP rated CO2 reading of 154 grams per kilometer. That's very similar to the readings you get from rival BMW 320i and Mercedes C180 models. Trade up to the A4 Avant 40 TFSI with 190 PS and you're looking at a very similar showing. 40.9 miles to the gallon and 155 grams per kilometer. For the 45 TFSI Quattro, it's 35.3 miles to the gallon and 182 grams per kilometer. The six cylinder S4 Avant models get the 48 volt MHEV system, which has a more sophisticated belt alternator starter generator package and can recover up to eight kilowatts of power and feed it back into the battery. 
As a result, an S4 event manages a WLTP rated combined cycle fuel return of up to 39 miles to the gallon and a WLTP rated CO2 reading of up to 186 grams per kilometre, which is pretty impressive for a sports estate capable of getting to 62 miles an hour in under five seconds. What else? Well, we'll tell you that the all-road estate returns fractionally lower readings than an equivalent Avant estate due to its higher ride height. This variant is the only one in the range to feature the 3 litre TDI diesel engine in 286 PS form, in which 50 TDI guys, it returns up to 38.2 miles to the gallon and up to 194 grams per kilometre of CO2 in sport form. Finally, there's the top petrol powered RS4 Avant, which of course makes you pay for your pleasures, recording up to 29.1 miles to the gallon and up to 219 grams per kilometre of CO2. Helping the A4 Avant stay competitive in efficiency terms are a whole series of careful design features. For example, the 2.0-litre TDI diesel variants get a controllable cool air inlet, a frame installed behind the radiator grille housing with two blinds that close at low speeds and open at higher ones to improve air resistance. Whatever your A4 variant of choice, magazine tests have pointed out that across the board, the efficiency figures we've quoted can be difficult to achieve in day-to-day -day motoring, but then that's not an issue exclusive to Audi. Much will depend on the driver, hence the Ingolstadt brand's efforts with this car to help the person at the wheel do more when it comes to frugality. An efficiency assist segment of the center dash infotainment screen allows you to activate or deactivate some of the car's main frugality aids, things like the intelligent coasting feature we mentioned earlier. You can also activate general economy tips and what Audi calls predictive messaging. There's also an energy consumers readout in the instrument cluster, showing you the effect that say the air conditioning is having on the car's energy usage. Beyond that, as usual with the company's models, there's an efficiency setting on the Drive Select Vehicle Dynamic System, which tweaks the air conditioning, uh, gear shift timings, and throttle response for maximum frugality. If you choose to use the individual Drive Select mode that allows you to tailor your preferred settings, you'll find that Efficient is one of three options you can choose for the Drive System setting. The MMI navigation system on this car has been programmed around what Audi calls predictive and efficient driving, which means that it will adapt the drive demeanor of your A4 Avant based on things like speed limits and gradient changes. And if you've specified the optional tour pack on this car, you'll find that it can be even more proactively efficient, thanks to the predictive efficiency assistance setup that comes as part of that pack's adaptive cruise assist system. Predictive efficiency assistant really is very clever, constantly gathering navigation data, camera images, and feedback from the built-in car to X message system that receives car swarm feedback from other similarly equipped vehicles. Using all of this, the software can then contribute to a more economical driving style. For example, uh, instructing you when to release the accelerator before entering a curve or behind a slower vehicle, for instance get onto the highway and with the adaptive cruise control system activated, efficiency assist will automatically make all the frugal driving adjustments for you. What else? Uh, well, bear in mind that as with all modern diesel cars, the TDI versions of this one use an AdBlue fuel additive stored in a separate rear tank that'll need to be topped up as part of regular servicing. It's a 12 litre tank as standard, but you can pay £60 more at point of purchase to get a 24 litre version of this tank that'll last you rather longer. Talking of maintenance, servicing your A4 Avant should be no more taxing than is the case with one of the company's smaller cars. As usual with Audi models, there's a choice of either a fixed or a flexible servicing regime the choice between the two depending on the extent of your likely annual mileage. The fixed schedule is aimed at drivers covering fewer than 10,000 miles a year and includes an oil change service every 9,000 miles or every year plus an inspection service every 19,000 miles or every two years. 
if you cover more than 10,000 miles a year, the flexible service schedule will be more appropriate. This regime, including oil change and inspection services at variable intervals of up to every 19,000 miles or every two years. Whatever package you go for, you'll need to change the brake fluid after the first three years, then every two years thereafter. Overall maintenance costs can be kept down if you go for one of the prepaid servicing plans that you'll be offered at initial purchase, which can cover you uh, up to a maximum of three years and include an oil service and a major service. What else? Uh, well, let's talk tax. The CO2 figures we briefed you on earlier for the two mainstream 30 TDI and 35 TDI 2 litre TDI diesel models see these variants slotting into the 28% benefiting kind company car tax bracket, but then that's also the case for rival models. For the base petrol A435 TFSI models, it's 29%. What else? Well, one small irritation is that in order to keep weight down, Audi only fits this car with a small 40 litre fuel tank. A proper sized 54 litre tank is a no cost option, so make sure you ask for it. On to residuals. The A4 has always performed well in this regard and nothing's changed here. According to industry experts CAP, a typical A435 TFSI S-Tronic Sport petrol model would, after three years and 60,000 miles, uh, be worth 35% of its original value. Compare that to the 31% figure you'd get from a rival Mercedes C180 Sport Estate. Or if you want more power in a petrol A4 Avant and trade up to a 40 TFSI variant, you'll find that an S-Line version of that derivative will also retain 35% of its value over the same period. Better than an equivalent Mercedes C200 AMG line estate, that's 31%, but a little worse than a comparable BMW 320i M Sport Touring, that's 38%. To give you a feel for diesel A4 Avant residuals, we'll tell you that the A440 TDI Quattro S-Line variant would, in Avant form according to CAP, be still worth 34% of its original value after three years and 60,000 miles. That compares to 33% for a BMW 320D xDrive Touring M Sport, or 32% for a Mercedes C220D Formatic AMG Line Estate. For completion, we'll touch on the residual figure for this S4 TDI over the same period, that's 37%. That's fractionally less than a BMW M340i xDrive Touring, but fractionally better than a Mercedes-AMG C43 Formatic Estate. We'll finish by covering the warranty. All cars in this class get three years of cover, but whereas BMW and Mercedes don't limit your mileage in this period, Audi rather meanly restricts you to 60,000 miles. Optional extra cost packages can extend the cover to either four or five years, and 75,000 or 95,000 miles respectively. As for insurance groupings, well, for the 30 TDI diesel variant, ratings start from group 22 for the 35 TDI rating start from group 25. For the 40 TDI Quattro, the rating start from group 28. For this S4 TDI, it's group 41. As for petrol power, well, for a base 35 TFSI, ratings start from group 23. For the 40 TFSI, they start from group 29. And for the 45 TFSI Quattro, they start from group 33. Here's a mid-sized executive estate model created by a brand that knows its customers. The magazines might tell Audi to bring us futuristic looks and an uncompromisingly dynamic drive, but Ingolstadt knows that buyers in this segment really value comfort, class and quality. All three attributes are prioritised in this smarter, more sophisticated and more advanced version of the fifth generation A4 Avant. No car is perfect though, and the A4 Avant does raise a few questions. It could be even bigger at the back, and obviously there are newer designs in the segment, like BMW's 3 Series Touring, with a bit more tech and showroom appeal. Other than that, it's hard not to see this one continuing to sell strongly against the best mid-sized executive load luggers. It's very thorough, very elegant, and very Audi.